Hi, I'm Christina and you're watching Creative Hub TV, the place to be seen and heard. Now I'm so excited to bring you today's guest. If you're someone who's been looking for love or try to figure out how to do love or create more love in your life, you're going to love this show. My guest has faced some of life's biggest struggles and challenges and has figured out that love is possible despite all odds and she's here to show us how. I'm passionate about your transformation and my hope today is that this story will motivate you in some way so that you can explore life on a whole new level. Welcome, Mel Balment. Hello, Mel. How are you? I'm really, really good, thank you. I am so excited about today because the moment I met you, your charisma, everything about you just got me so excited. I mean, you give us hope that love is possible and I can't wait to hear your story today. Let's get into it. Wow. Okay, so now you teach your clients to redefine love and release love. Now, that's quite incredible. And this is actually created this amazing finalist award. Tell us a little bit about um, how this got started. Well, one of the things we need to do is let people know that we exist. There are many people out there who are they're struggling quietly at home. Mm. And if they don't know that help's there for them, then they're not going to reach out. So one of the ways that I have um, utilize things like awards and creating some exposure for myself, letting my, let, let my future clients know that I'm here. And um, I'm working really hard in the background to make sure my services are exactly what they need for the transformations they seek in their life. Now, you're a female, but you started off coaching men. How did this happen? Um, I've always been in the corporate world. I was an executive assistant for 20 plus years. and working in a highly masculine environment, um, always principally supporting men, um, I have an affinity to understand how they operate, what makes them tick, um, yet have, I'm, I'm not afraid of their power and their strength and the positions they hold. From a young age I was exposed to quite senior executives. Mm. Um, I have met three prime ministers in my career mm. and it allows you to um, humanize them. We kind of put some of these executives up on pedestals and at the end of the day they're just humans that have managed to excel in one particular area of their life. So what is it about you that men would say hey I want to work with her knowing that you're a female and all so yeah how it, would this happen? I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it yes your single bloke mates <laughs> your mates don't have the answers. If they're single and you're going to them for advice, are they really going to have the sound, unbiased guidance that you need to hear if you're struggling with women? Mm. It's kind of that simple, really. Why would you go to a man to understand a female? So you worked in the corporate world and you're saying that that helped you to understand men better. Yeah. But let's dig a little bit deeper. There, there must be some more um, to the story that would actually help you to understand men on a much deeper level that would want you to work with them. Um, maybe even deeper than the corporate world that you have been in professionally. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things in your past? Yeah, um, the, the this back story is a long one. Yeah. Maybe not for this short interview, yes. but I have um, quite a an interesting and troubled childhood. Mm. And because of that, I have done um, an immense amount of work on myself. And in that process, through my divorce, through subsequent many dates, um, I have seen the other side of what men struggle with. Mm. So not only have I dealt with my own history and brought new perspectives to my life through my healing, through my coaching, through my training, mm. but I also have been able to see um, how much we're making it difficult for men to be men in our world. So my training has given me a different insight that 
makes it, um, I guess, a, a more um, rounded conversation with women that men are actually really struggling in our world. And it's about time somebody stood up and actually spoke up for the men from mm. a female perspective. Now you say that we're all born with a spark. What is that spark? We're all born with curiosity. We're mm. all born with love. And through the ages, through the decades for some of us, mm. um, that um, desire to explore and adventure and, and free spirit is actually dulled down. Mm -hmm. So through religion, through society, through some parental environments, and certainly through schooling, mm. we're taught how to fit into a box. Mm. We're shown how to climb a certain ladder. I did it myself, I get mm. it. Um, and to reach a certain status symbol or a certain position that society says is a good one instead of exploring all the other opportunities. So I find that we're kind of dulled down with our potential mm. and a lot of creative, a lot of nurturing, a lot of skills and innate desires are kind of pushed down. Mm. And so how can we do that? How can we bring the harmony between what innately is within us yes. to express versus having a career that is maybe more rigid and, and stepped? What is it about you that you believe that you're here to show us that love is possible for everyone? Yeah, so it's quite a deep question. It's quite, mm. um, I guess, a spiritual and ph philosophical mm. perspective I have on life. Yes. Um, through dealing with a lot of my quite heavy, in some people's perspectives, yeah. childhood, yes. um, through all that healing and all that um, work I've done in myself, mm. I've worked out that my purpose on earth is to teach and express and demonstrate and show what love can be within yourself mm. and then you bring that into a relationship. Um, it's true, love starts with self, yes. but we, we are all carrying baggage. How do we let that baggage go so that we can show up as our absolute enriched, fullest version of ourself um, without all the BS of the I'm an empowered individual mm. and I'm, I'm a survivor, I'm a thriver. Just who are you at your, at your core? And I think through me going through that whole evolution myself, yes. now I teach love through just being who I am at soul, at, at true authentic self. Who am I? I'm love. So to get to love, obviously first um, you would have to cross that bridge of forgiveness, right? Because otherwise you don't have that clean slate to work with. Yeah. I mean, forgiveness truly is one of the most powerful things. Tell us a little bit about um, how you work with forgiveness and how you get that across with people say that are angry or um, frustrated or years and years of carrying this thing how do you help them release what they're going through and actually say hey forgiveness is your first step it's not an easy first step mm. it takes a little bit of um, self-awareness and you definitely have to have that bigger and it's not about religion or woo-woo spirituality mm. it's about everything yes what can I take away from it that is my positive lesson that I can I can grow from a negative experience mm. how can we turn something that quite often with many of my clients is quite horrific or traumatic mm -hmm. how can we turn that into a perspective of okay I can't change the past what am I going to do going forward? Am I going to let that wound me mm. and affect my behaviors and therefore my relationships, whether that's at work, yes. which is where mine started, yes. um, or whether you bring that into your intimate relationship, which is the most tragic place to play out our negativity. The ones we love, who we trust the most to be ourselves, is also usually the ones that cop our, our baggage. So how do you help your clients to redefine and release love? How does that actually happen? Um, it's a bit of a structured process. There's mm -hmm. a framework that we, we kind of follow, but it's very personalized. Yeah. Um, I have clients who want to rekindle their connection with their children. Mm. Um, how do I communicate with my, my teenagers? Mm. You know, a whole different... I don't have all the answers in that, so yeah. I'm just saying... Um, <laughs> So it takes, there's a, a kind of modality and process that we follow, but then it's very personalized. So it's not one cookie cutter fits all that mm. you can't work that way. Even if you've got two twins with the same set of experiences, they're yes. still going to need different approaches. 
So can you share with us some inspiring transformations that you have seen with your clients? Ooh, um, so just to preframe, my business is built on absolute discretion. Yes. And the identity of my clients sharing their deepest, sometimes darkest secrets yes. um, is of paramount. So I never talk about names. So this is a fictitious person yeah. with a real example. Yes. Um, it's a female and she had um, decided after 17 years that her relationship just her marriage couldn't continue. Mm -hmm. She'd had enough of whatever she was experiencing. And she had hit rock bottom, absolute despair. And she called me up, I don't know what to do, I need to talk to someone. And um, being the wing girl I am, I'm available, call me. What mm -hmm. do you, how can I help? She couldn't drive, she couldn't do anything, so I went to her and, and picked her up and brought her back to my, my studio. And she just cried and sobbed, just mm. let out the heartache and some of the guilt and the blame and the anger and just, just let the emotions go. Mm. And my job was simply just to hold space for her to work through those emotions. But what came out of it was um, she simply couldn't calm herself mm. to just settle in order to return home. So I led her through my meditation and just to slow down her breathing and kind of regroup and control mm. and release, fully release everything that was bottled up. And it led into this amazing, completely spontaneous um, healing session that um, literally the next day um, she went home and the husband the next day, I don't know what you've done, but everything has changed her wow. her mannerism is softer the way she feel, feel, felt about herself um, was completely altered and we call that a paradigm shift where yes. you completely see things in a different way wow. and so she was able to reflect how she was playing a part in her perceived upset mm -hmm. why he was causing her to feel certain ways and she said I'm causing some of this I play a part mm -hmm. um, and then when she was able to come back to the marriage differently mm. he was able to be in the marriage differently so he indirectly was able to benefit from the work she'd done on herself and they s <laughs> they had a fun couple of weeks as they reunited with one another and they said that literally that was about a year ago and they've never looked back it's like the first couple of years when they first met wow so yeah it's a beautiful story it's a very beautiful transforming story